There may be times when you need to refund part of a customer's order. It's really simple to do. And I'm going to show you how to do it. To start, I'm going to go over to the order that I'm going to refund part of it. So I'm going to go into orders on the left hand side. And I'm gonna refund part of this top order that shows it's already fulfilled. This was a test order that I made and then I selected it and then I came down and marked it as fulfilled. I never actually shipped anything because it was a test order, but it'll work just the same that we can see how the refund will work. I'm gonna click into that. I have fake information over here, so just ignore that. And then up here in the top, you'll see here's the refund button. And there's also a return button. I think within the last year or so, Shopify had added this return button. So that just makes it easier for you to send a label if you need something to be returned. Now for my business, if something was broken, I often just refunded the money for that item. I didn't really want the broken item back. If you think someone's lying, that might be why you want them to send it back. That way they don't get to keep the item if it's not broken. But I trusted my customers that when they were claiming something was broken, I believed them it was broken. I would refund them for the item or I would send them a new one. And then if my customers didn't want something, like they decided they wanted to return it, I expected them to buy their own labels and return it because I wasn't going to eat the cost of them returning it. So then I was never providing labels. So if I hit this return, we'll just look in here real quickly. So you can turn that there's like a self-service returns where people can open the returns up on their own and you don't have to do anything. And it looks like that self-service returns area is in the settings and then you would go into customer accounts and then you could turn on the self-service returns. Again, that's not something really I did because I had the customers pay to send it back if they're going to send it back to me. But here you could select which item to be returned. You could create a label through Shopify. You could upload a label or you could have no shipping required. So I just want to let you know that is an option, but I'm going to go back into the refunding. So if we hit the refund button here, it won't automatically refund anything, so don't stress. The first time I clicked that, I know I was nervous that it was gonna automatically refund the whole order or something, but it doesn't. So don't feel scared clicking that button. And then here it's saying refunded items cannot be returned. So once you hit that something is refunded, you can't go into that return area and try to make a label and say that that item is getting returned. So I guess just kind of know the difference of how you want to handle your refunds or your returns. And then here, with these prices, it will show if a discount was applied. So it will show what that updated new price was after the discount. And if you come next to something, let's say, say, I want one of these patterns to be refunded, it will work out the total on the right hand side. It'll add their taxes back in there that they paid. So you're refunding the taxes. It's showing the discount amount and it's showing what the discount was, why they were getting that discount amount. Now, once this total comes over on this right hand side, you can change that if you want. So let's say you wanted to give that original price back. So it took off 45 cents. Let's say you wanted to add the 45 cents on there and you wanted to make this 476. That is an option. So you can adjust this. And then for shipping, let's say you wanted to refund the shipping cost that they paid at checkout. You can come refund it in here. You can refund part of the shipping if you wanted to. You could refund none of the shipping. If you don't even want to put it here and you just want to add the shipping over here, you could also do that. And then reason for refund, only you and other staff can see this reason. So I feel like it's good to take notes. Let's say pattern was torn during shipment or something. And let's say we weren't gonna send a new one, we were just gonna refund them for it and the customer was fine with that. That way we can see this note. And then over here, you can choose to send a notification to a customer or you can choose not to send a notification. I'm gonna click in here. We're gonna kind of look at what the notification would look like. And so I'm gonna leave the page for now. So now it pops up with the sample of that order refund. So your order has been refunded, total amount refunded, and then it would be whatever the amount is. It may take up to 10 days for this refund to appear in your account. So that is what Shopify is saying. If you wanna edit anything, you can edit the code. You would need to know some programming to be able to edit this. And right up top here, it is showing that there may be different ways it is worded, though it could say like your order has been refunded, you have received a refund, some items in your order have been refunded. It may be worded in different ways based upon how you put the refund through. And then again, we could hit the preview here. It just shows in a little bit of a different way. You could send a test email to yourself. If you just click that, it'll just automatically send an email associated with your Shopify account. So I'm going to go back. Also up here, you can send a test email. I'm gonna go back into that order. 
And I'm just gonna put that we're gonna refund this one pattern and all of shipping. And then one other thing, you can choose to restock the item or not. So let's say they send it back to you and you're gonna restock it. You can leave this check mark. And this example, if it was torn and I'm just letting the customer keep it, tell them to throw it away, I can put to not restock that because I did not get the item back. If you don't have Shopify restock it, you can always manually do that yourself if you want to. And then over here, once you have everything sorted how you want, you can hit refund. And it'll go so processing refund and then if we scroll down near the bottom right here it's saying a seven dollar seventy cents us refund is pending and then you sent a refund notification email to the customer and then here we can even view the email so total amount refunded 770 it may take up to 10 days for this refund to appear in your account it shows that this one was refunded because I did select that as one of one I wanted refunded. Here, I'm gonna get out of here. And then when you scroll to the top, it doesn't say anything up here at the moment, but once the refund goes through, I think it does say that it's been partially refunded. I did wanna go back and show some of my previous orders. So once that refund processes, it'll show this partially refunded text in the payment status of the order. And one other thing, a time when I often used that refund button was if someone's discount didn't go through or if someone forgot to apply a discount code, I could just go in and I could type on that right hand side and say, I want to refund, let's say just $2 or whatever the dollar amount was. And then I can just go and send that customer an email on my own and say, hey, I have refunded this much. It may take a few days for you to see it, but I have submitted the refund. And really it is simple as that. Submitting refunds is not hard at all.